We are all aware of Android's customizability. You can customize almost everything on an Android smartphone. But not everyone is aware of the fact that you can customize different elements of an Android interface to create a beautiful and personalized experience. Well, as you might have guessed, we are here to tell you exactly that. What's up guys, this is Rupesh from Bebomb.com and today I'm going to show you how you can completely customize your Android smartphone. Yes, that's right. So let's get started. Let's start by changing the wallpaper on the device. Yeah, I know it's pretty basic and something all of us usually do. But if you really want your Android home screen to look gorgeous, it's important to set that perfect wallpaper. While there are a number of great wallpaper apps, my personal favorite is Tap It. It's a pretty simple app that brings you beautiful automated wallpapers with different patterns. The best thing is, you can set the app to surprise you with new wallpapers hourly or daily or whatever time interval you want. On the main page of the app, you can swipe left to check out the different patterns or swipe right to check out different color combinations for the patterns. If you like a wallpaper, just hit the thumbs up icon and it will be set as wallpaper on your device. Yes, the Tap It app is a fairly different wallpaper app, but you need to try it. It's great. However, if you're looking for a more simpler wallpaper app, you can check out Backdrops or Google's wallpaper app. If you haven't installed a launcher on your Android smartphone yet, you are missing out on so much. Chances are the stock home screen and app drawer on your device looks pretty good. But if you want more customizability and control, you should get a launcher. And my personal recommendation is the Nova launcher. There are other launchers available on the Play Store, but Nova is arguably the best out of the lot. The Nova launcher packs in a plethora of features and the developers do make sure to update the app with the latest Android version changes. So even if you don't have the latest Android version, you can get a similar interface with the Nova launcher. In fact, we recently used the launcher in our video on how to get pixel features. You should check it out. But the best thing about Nova launcher is it runs amazingly well and it won't slow down your phone, which is very important. If you'd want to try out other launchers, you can check out our article on the best launchers from the link in the description below. We've already mentioned the fact that Nova launcher brings you a lot of customization options. So let's start playing with it. I'll be telling you the options I use, but you can always do whatever you want with the different options. By the way, I'll recommend you to buy the Nova Launcher Prime version if you want all the features. After you've installed Nova Launcher from the Play Store, first make sure to set it as the default launcher. Once done, open Nova Settings and head to the desktop option to first customize the home screen. Here you can change the desktop grid. I use it as 5x5. Then tap on the icon layout option and change the icon size and font size. I have set the icon size to 120% and font size to medium. You can also check out other options in the desktop page like search bar style. I personally like the new pixel style search bar. You can also change the scroll effect. I use the wipe option because it makes up for a cool sidebar like effect. There are also other options like padding, page indicator etc. I pretty much use the same options in the dock as well. However, in the dock option you can also check out options like dock background. You can even have swipeable dock pages. That is cool right? Then you can head to the app and widget draws option. Here you can change the app draw style. Enable or disable the card background. I personally like the pixel like swipe up to open the drawer. You can also enable the swipe indicator. That's not all, you can change the background of the app drawer and more. There's also the tab bar option which I enable so that I can set draw groups of different apps under categories like social, work, games, etc. It looks cool and is pretty handy. Then there's the folders option where I use the Android Nougat style folder background. Here you can also change the folder preview style, the transition, background and the icon size in the folder. I use the icon size as 120% and medium font. You can then head to the look and feel option, where you can change the icon pack, which we will get back to later. Here you can choose the scroll speed, animation speed etc. You can also customize the notification bar. 
I usually disable the show notification bar option as it really makes the home screen look clean. You can also enable the search as well option which makes sure the Google search widget does not open the full Google app. Moving on you can check out the night mode options if you are a fan of dark themes. This is not one of the blue light filter options. It is just a black theme. I also love the gestures option in Nova Launcher. Here you can change the behavior of the home button on long press, enable the okay Google hot word and set up gestures for different actions, apps or shortcuts. I use the swipe up gesture to open Nova settings. Swipe down to open the notification shade which comes in really handy if you have a large phone. I also use the double tap to lock the screen. The last option in the Nova launcher is unread count badges which as the name suggests puts an iOS like notification badge on apps. I'm not really a fan of it but some people love it so you can check it out. Well those were the Nova launcher options you can play with. Some of the other launchers pack in similar features however not all of them. So like I said you can play around with these options to create a personalized experience. There is no shortage of great icon packs on the Play Store but you'll have to choose an icon pack that goes well with your wallpaper. It is important that the icons don't look out of place against the wallpaper. So if you want a minimal look you can check out the NIMBY icon pack. For a material design look, you can check out the Materis icon pack. If you like Android 7.1's rounded icons, get the Pixel icon pack. I'm using the Alos icon pack which brings quirkle icons, looks flat and goes with the wallpaper. Widgets is one functionality on Android that is pretty underrated. Which is a shame because you can do a lot more with widgets. They not only bring functionality and information right to your home screen, but they also bring a touch of beauty. If you want to custom design a widget and add functionality that you want, you can use the Zupo Widget Pro, which is available for approximately $3. There is a free version, but it is pretty limited. For the weather, I'll recommend you the One Weather app, which brings some pretty cool widgets. For the clock, I use either minimalist clock or the minimal UCCW clock widget. I also like the buzz widget app which brings multiple widgets for weather, clock, battery and more. While users with rooted Android devices have a number of great apps to customize the navigation bar, non-rooted users only have the navbar apps which is a pretty decent app. The app lets you add color and more to the otherwise bland navigation bar on stock Android. You can select a custom color for the navigation bar with its static color option. If you want the navigation bar's color to match the palette of the presently opened app, you can choose the active app option. You can also set certain apps to have a specific navigation bar color. Also the app lets you add widgets to the navigation bar. Presently you can add a battery widget with more widgets like music coming soon. You can also add custom images in the navigation bar. But this feature is only available in the full version of the app, which is priced at around a dollar. You can choose your own image or check out the Google Plus community of the navbar apps where you'll find hundreds of custom images tailored to fit the navigation bar. Along with the home screen, the lock screen too is a much used interface on Android. And like every other element on Android, you can customize it according to your liking. There are various lock screen replacement apps but my favorite is Microsoft's next lock screen app. The lock screen packs in contextual features as it shows you your most used apps based on time and location right on the lock screen. Along with the apps, the lock screen also brings access to favorite contacts, various shortcuts and toggles. It also shows you new beautiful wallpapers from Bing and supports fingerprint scanner and lock, which is nice considering not many lock screen apps support it. If you want a different lock screen app, you can check out our article on the best lock screen apps from the link in the description below. When we talk about customization on Android, we generally tend to miss on the notification center and the status bar. But don't worry, I have you covered. For the notification center, you can use the material status bar notific app. Yes, I know the app has a weird name. With the app, you can choose different themes for the status bar as well as the notification panel. For the status bar, you can choose specific colors for different apps and you can even colorize the notification panel. The app is available in a free version but it features ads and is pretty limited when it comes to themes. 
you can buy the full version for around one and a half dollars or get it for free by installing a sponsored app. If you want to customize the status bar even more, you can check out the status app. While some manufacturers include different fonts in their Android build, stock Android only includes Google's Roboto font. However, there are ways to change the font on an Android device to get a more personalized look. You could use the iPhone app, which brings hundreds of cool fonts to choose from. Sadly, the app only works on rooted devices. If you own a Samsung device, you will be able to set a font without root access. In the app, once you have chosen a font, you can download it and then hit the set button. The app will then prompt you to reboot the device, after which the font will be installed. It is that simple. You can also use another app dubbed High Font, which brings a plethora of fonts in different categories. Both the apps are available for free, but they include ads, which can be a little annoying. If you have a rooted Android smartphone, you can customize it even more. You can install various custom ROMs, change boot animations, install various customization apps, and do a lot more. You can check out our video on the best rooted apps, which features some really cool customization apps. Also, like always, you can find the link to all the apps in the description below. Well, those were the ways through which you can totally customize your Android smartphone. If you think we missed out on something, do let us know in the comment section below. Also, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. Well, that's me signing off. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.